Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am super excited to be guest designing for Stamping Bella for the month of March. And today I am going to be using these adorable little Irish chicks. Um, I am a scene stamper, if you've never seen my videos before, and I really wanted to do a little scene with all three of them. I just loved them endlessly and could not uh, leave one of them out. So I had to figure out a way to make all of them in. So basically I used a square die to just draw a square with a pencil on my um, card panel, which is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And then I grabbed the actually the packaging, the, the piece of acetate that my stamps came on. And I'm gonna use this as a guide to build my scene, even though I'm using cling stamps. So I'm using my Mini Misty. I've pulled out the foam insert because these are rubber stamps. They um, they have the little mount built in. They have the foam built in. I don't need the insert. I stamped that um, rainbow on the acetate. I'm gonna stamp it again because I need a mask. And this is um, Eclipse masking paper. I'm also gonna use uh, the post-it note. But anyway, um, so in order to get my positioning right, that's what I'm using the acetate for. So I put that acetate, it's flush with the left-hand side and the corner. And then I can put that back in every time and line up where my little stamps need to be. So this one I'm stamping because I want him in the forefront. I want him to be the first, um, well, I guess technically the second bird coming down the slide. But then I'm going to mask him. I'm going to put that rainbow back in place on the acetate. And then I'm going to stamp my next little bird so I can make sure both of them line up and they're sliding down the rainbow, which is the concept that I came up with um, so that I could fit all of my birds on one card. I It's obviously intended the way the stamp set is drawn for these little birds to slide down um, the rainbow, which is adorable. Um, here, I'm just disappointed that I cut off a shirt because it says kiss me, I'm Irish, and that's adorable. But I did what I did, and it is what it is. Um, so anyway, uh, I just decided I was going to extend the rainbow slide. So that's what I did so I could fit all three of them on there. Now that I have those two stamped, I can go ahead and stamp my rainbow. And then I'm going to stamp the last, um, well, um, no, I'm lying. I'm going to create the mask for the rainbow. So I put that eclipse paper down. I did have to put my face right on top of it, but you can see through it to line it up. You just have to be close. So I did that. I used my pencil to just draw like continuations of that line. It doesn't have to be fantastic. Um, the other thing that you can use for that acetate is I put it in place there because my stamp was dirty and I was too lazy to clean it and I didn't want it to leave marks on my card. So it's another little trick you can use that acetate for. I stamped the um, little bird that has actually hit the pot of gold. And here, oh, this was such a bad decision. I thought I'd save myself some time and just go ahead and stamp the sentiment because um, I had already stamped my sentiment a bunch of times to figure out what was straight. And so I stamped it down. I put my rainbow mask in place, and now I'm also gonna mask out that square. I'm using the um, the post-it note tape for that. It's two inch, I just cut it in half. You just wanna make sure you put the straight edge up to um, the square. If the jagged edge hangs off, it doesn't even matter. Because I wanted to do some distress inking. This isn't necessary. Um, but I thought it just needed a little something to create a focal point. And so I opted to just kind of frame in these two on the slide. I went around with um, Salty Ocean Distress Ink first, and I left a halo in the center. I thought that that was um, a eye-catching way to just really draw your eye to those two little um, chicks. And then I used Blueprint Sketch all around the edge. I did not completely cover up the Salty Ocean. And then the Chip Sapphire just in the corners. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the masks. Um, and here I would just caution you, make sure you don't have ink on your fingers, especially when you're doing a one layer panel. Um, usually it's you can get it on your fingers and then you kind of ruin it if you get little, well, I shouldn't say ruin it because everything is fixable. Um, but you can get little fingerprints. Anywho, I'm going to go back in with a pencil now that I have that masked, uh, I had masked it, remember, with the distress ink. And so now is when I'm going to go back in and draw the lines that actually matter. So I drew them with a pencil first, and then I went over them with a Copic Safe writing pen. And now I'm just erasing my lines. We're going to get into the Copic coloring. But before we do, I just wanted to show you um, 
Stamping Bella has wonderful colorists that work for them, and all of their packages come pre-colored. Um, so if you ever have a question about shading or color combos, or you're not really sure, like just look at your packaging because um, they've already done a bang up job at doing all of the, the shading and, and the combinations. And um, so if you are struggling for inspiration, it's right there, just sitting right in front of you. You already bought it. Um, when I started the Copa coloring, uh, I didn't realize I was off the screen because um, I'm not used, to, I guess I'm not used to coloring a focal point that's the entire length of my card. I'm used to like something that's more centralized. But anywho, the cloud looks very gray right now because I added shading behind those little curls um, with some gray and some blue. But by the time we add the rest of the colors, it really will look like a white cloud. So just bear with me. Reason number one why it was a terrible idea to stamp my sentiment first. Uh, is because the sentiment was straight, at least I'm pretty sure it was straight when I stamped it, but because of the way that I did my square, it looks like it's crooked now. So that's a problem. Reason number two why it was a terrible idea to stamp my sentiment is I stamped it in Simon Says Stamp Black Ink. Intense black ink is Copic Safe. It will not smear or blur or any of those things um, when you use Copic markers. Their regular black ink is not, which means I put this where I put it and then I got to color over it and I'm desperately trying not to smear the ink. Anywho, we're going to fix it later. For the rainbow of colors that I chose here, I'm basically just, it's already segregated into, into three sections. So I'm doing a red and an orange, a yellow and a green and a blue and a, and a violet. When you're picking your colors to do your rainbow, you want to look at the last number. That's the important one. So the colors that I chose um, are in between like twos and fours. So I, you know, I'm blending a Y02 with a G or a YG03. I'm blending a, a B02 with a V04. So because they are very similar in that in um, the intensity, um, they will blend well together. The only one that is slightly different is the RV35. I've never had any issues blending it into a y, um, YR04, but the reason that I chose the 35 is because the 32 is like peach. It's not really red, and clearly for my rainbow, I would like red. So each time I'm just kind of slightly overlapping the colors, I go over them um, twice to make sure everything is good and blended. And then I'm going to move on to these cute little chicks. Just love these little chicks. Um, I'm going to show you the color. Well, I'm going to show you one and a half colorings. That's what I'm going to do. So this first one, um, I'm just going to fill in his little beak and his feet with the YR04. It's the same one I used for all of the chicks. Are they hymns or are they hers? I feel like they're hymns. I'm not sure. I feel like they're hymns. That's what I'm calling them. Um, anyway, I always start with my lightest color and work out to my darkest. That just works for me. I'm very, very heavy handed. And so um, if I start with my darkest color, I will have no highlight. That's just, I don't know, the way my brain works, whatever the color that I use the first is the color I use the most of. So here, I typically tend to color as if my light source is in the top right hand corner, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I am also adding, you can see little flicks of color in between the wings. I'm adding the little flicks of color in between the wings to give that wing some shape. You do not have to do this, okay? You can just add um, slightly darker shading, um, like underneath the little wing or on the edges of the wings heading closer to the body, um, and that will still be really, really pretty. This is just the way that I color, and for my first um, guest spot, um, I just wanted to kind of bring to the table um, me, what it, what is genuinely me, which is a, a one-layer card with lots of Copa coloring and making a scene. Um, so again, if you, if you have never watched my videos before, that's what I got. That's how I roll. With that said, I love, 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 love teaching. I love when you guys learn things, when you're inspired to try new things. Um, so I would encourage you uh, to leave me a comment and let me know if there is something that you want to see um, over the course of the next month. I, I will have three more videos for you before um, the month is out. 
And uh, if there's something that you really do want to see, I would I would love to be able to showcase that for you because ultimately I'm doing the videos for you so you guys can learn. Okay, moving on to this gold. Um, I'm doing it the same colors and this can kind of be tricky because you don't want one to look like it's part of the other. You want there to be some separation. Um, but... I didn't, I mean, the chicks are yellow and the gold is gold. I mean, they are what they are. <laughs> so um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to really concentrate on the shadow underneath my little chick's tushy and make sure that that definitely separates the two. Also, um, I'm, I don't know, I'm being totally pretentious with the shading of these little gold things because it doesn't need this much shading. Sometimes I just get in a groove because I always use four markers. That's what I like. That's what gives me the best um, blending for me. Um, now, that, you know, there's some people who can get great blending with two and some can do it with three, some need five. So it just depends on where you're at and what looks best to you. Um, I'm a number four girl. Um, but these did not need four colors. This is insanity. Um, so anywho, you could have done this with two colors. I would have done the Y02 and the YR24 and then called it. That isn't what I did. By the time that this is over, you can't even see the Y02. Um, but it did help to like pre-moisten the paper because Copics blend better when the paper is damp. So here, I was not going to show you this chick. Um because I just figured, well, I already just showed you a check. But the shading was so different that I wanted to at least mention it. So this chick chilling with his beer is like kind of curled up. He has like a little pot belly, which is so cute. Um, I'm pretty sure pot bellies are only cute on pigs and stamps, but nonetheless, it's super cute. Um, so here, that's going to be the highest point. That's where I want my highlight to be. So even though right now his face looks darker, that's okay because um, as the card comes together and more color gets added, it will start to make more sense. So I'm using the same color combination for the beer. I don't drink beer, um, but if I did, I'd like to think I'd be as chill as this dude is. Um, like his buddy behind him's like, wee, buddy, you need to move. And he's like, Do you need to just calm down because you're about to spill my beer. Um, <laughs> or at least that's how it goes in my head anyway. So um, I am coloring with black. Okay, so I am going to put black in my black, but we're actually going to get the majority of the shading with the black with grays. So again, light source is on the right hand side. So that's going to be where my highlight is. However, I really think because of the way that this is drawn. So clearly this chick comes flying down the slide, hits the pot of gold, and the right hand side kind of squishes in. I don't, I think that there would be darker shading there. In reality, I think that there would be because it's smushed down. That's not the way that I did the rest of the shading on the card. I had already done it as if the light source was in the top right hand corner. So I'm not sweating it. I'm putting that highlight on the right hand side and I don't care. So I'm starting with the C3, but I did, you'll notice, leave myself some white areas and they are generous white areas because I told you I'm heavy handed. I will eat up my white highlight and then I'll have none. So the left hand side is going to be where it's darker and I am adding a little bit of darkness to the top and the bottom of the rim as well as the edges that have the highlight because um, the highlight's not going to go all the way around the back, first of all. But second of all, it helps to bring those highlights forward if those contrasting colors are directly next to it. You will also notice that in the the squish the squishy part, the squishy part of the pot, um, I have two white areas that I've left there as well. And this is because if something squishes, there is one layer that's going to stick out further than the layer that is next to it. And so that's what I'm trying to pay attention to. I'm slowly but surely getting rid of that highlight. Um, and then eventually I'm going to cover it up. If you did not want your pot to be shiny, you would not leave a bold, bright white highlight. I'm going to go back in and later and add it with a white gel pen, quite honestly. But that would be how you would color it if you didn't want it to be super shiny. 
I used the same golds for the buckles. I basically just added shading um, to the bottom for the chick that's in the pot and the um, one that is sliding down with his beer. I added shading to the left hand side. Moving on to these hats. I'm going to show you both hats because they are different. So for this one, he's laying on his back. The light source is hitting the top of his hat. It's going to hit his brim differently. So the shadows for his brim of his hat are going to be closest to his face, but then there's also going to be some shadows um, where it is away from the sun, and that's going to carry up a little bit up toward the, the front of the brim. Man, I hope that makes sense. So the lightest part is going to be actually the the section that's between the the two parts of the brim, the top and the bottom parts of the brim. That's going to be the lightest area. And then for the rest of the top hat, it will be on that top edge. I used my lightest green color to color in the, um, is it a four leaf clover? Nope, it's a three leaf clover. Um, and then I'm going to move on to this other hat. So for this one, the shading is a little bit different because the hat is drawn different. So you're going to have shading from the top of the hat, like where the top starts, not where it ends. And then you're also going to have shading coming up from the bottom. I always like to leave a lighter edge um, where it meets the top of the hat because you want there, again, to be some separation. For the brim on this one, the lightest part is going to be the part on top. This is extremely difficult to do if you are not very well practiced with Copic markers. If you cannot do that, just use the very, very teeny tiny tip of your marker to add shading to that brim. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just leave it the lightest color and it'll still look completely amazing. Um, here again, I'm, I'm kind of eating up that highlight for the lightest color um, until it looks, you know, it's blended and it looks fluid. It's not shiny. I don't want it to be super shiny. For this little chick, um, I'm doing just basically because he is set behind this chick with the beer. Um, his shirt's going to have shading coming up from there. And then also his wings are up um, by his shoulders. Chickens have shoulders? I don't even know. Um, anyway, they're up by his face. So there's also going to be some shading there. So I was super bummed about the little shirt because his little shirt is so cute. It says, kiss me, I'm Irish. And when I, before, I, actually before I started dating my husband, he used to wear this green shirt on St. Patrick's Day that said it, um, it had uh, Mario from um, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, and it said, kiss me, I'm Italian. The irony of this is um, my husband is very much Italian, uh, but he's also equal parts Irish. So why he would not just wear an Irish shirt, I don't know. Um, also, while having this conversation, I have to wonder, so Super, it's, they're called Super Mario Brothers, but Mario's name is Mario and his brother's name is Luigi. So it would make sense if they were Mario Brothers, but it was Luigi Mario, not Mario Mario. Why are they called that? Anyway, these are the tangents that my brain goes off on. So sorry. So also, you should know that if you watch my videos, I kind of sometimes go off on crazy thought-provoking. Um, it was about Nintendo. It wasn't really that thought-provoking, but that's how my brain works. So I'm going back in with a white gel pen, adding some highlights into those things, specifically to the ruffles that are um, around the the chick with the the, I, the shirt on um, because I really just couldn't keep them white. I like to outline all of my images. That is what you saw me doing was outlining all of those. And then the bottom felt a little ungrounded. So I decided I would add just like a little patch of grass underneath my pot. And I'm doing that with the same greens I, I had already used, uh, a YG03, the G05, and then the darkest shading will go directly underneath the pot. And that is just the G17. I'm going to blend that all back out with the lightest color and then I'm going to start trying to work on working the sentiment. This is how I got the sentiment straight to begin with on my acrylic block. Black, black, wow, enunciation is important. Um, so basically I just kept stamping it until I had it straight. 
So this one is finally straight and I'm going to heat emboss this. So it is a one layer scene, but it's not a completely one layer card because I got to fix my boo-boos. See me clean on that stamp? That's important. Take note of that. I cleaned my stamp because I was stamping in black ink and I wanted to stamp in Versamark and I didn't want to get black ink on my Versamark pad. I, um, what is that? An embossing buddy. So I'm using the anti-static tool and then I'm stamping in Versamark ink. I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat set this using white Simon Says Stamp embossing powder. The reason that that is important that I cleaned my stamp is because I set my baby wipe down when the same place that I always set it and I didn't think anything of it. It's like on the little um, dresser next to my desk and it touched my card. Do you see this? I got a wrinkly spot. I got a wrinkly wet spot on my card and I don't, I'm never, I'm not starting over. First of all, I was like 95% done. So I'm definitely not starting over, but I also believe that everything's fixable. So here, I'm just going to extend out that green area and I'm going to add in some texture and then nobody will ever even know that my card got wet. I will note though that I did dry it before I did this fix. So the paper was not still wet. So I'm just using the tip of my marker and some uh, flicks of color to add in um, just a few, you know, little grass strands there. That texture is going to completely mask um, the error that I have of getting my card wet. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere this down to my card base. I don't usually show me putting them on my card base because everything else I do takes so long. But somebody had asked me recently on one of my YouTube videos, how do I keep, if I do one layer cards, how do I keep the colors from bleeding through? This is how I do it. I don't, I use, I, do, I make card panels and then I adhere it to the card base. So the, it is a one quote unquote one layer card. Um, but it is two pieces of cardstock thick so that it doesn't bleed through. I figured before I uh, adhered the sentiment, since it's going to hang over that rainbow, I should add all of the clear Wink of Stella because rainbows cannot not be glittery, shiny goodness. So I put that down and then I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to it. So I'm using some clear sequins. I put those down with glossy accents. And then once I have them down, I like to go back in and just add a little drop of glossy accents to the center. And that keeps them from moving around in the mail. I know that they're going to stay where they're supposed to. So that is the entire card. Thank you so much uh, to Stamping Bella for having me. And thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.